Instead of the polished, very commercial soul that was Motown's trademark, this amazing artist was a bit of a knackerism when he first arrived. These musicians, well and sax, hark back to the early days of R&B and mimic some of his early influences, including Louis Jordan, Big J. Manili, and King Curtis. Junior Walker and the All-Stars were a natural fit for Barry Gordy's soul label, but today's video focuses on Junior Walker. His greedy sax had a Zach steamy, funky vibe that Gordy was searching for to anchor his new label, which would compete with Stax and Vote Records. Before we get started in today's video, please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out on any more uploads. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. Oscar Mixon was born in Blytheville, Arkansas on June 14, 1931. His name, according to multiple sources, was Autry D. Walt Mixon Jr. His family immediately moved to South Bend, Indiana. Now, growing up, he was heavily inspired by R&B performers that he heard in the early 50s, including Louis Jordan, Earl Bostick, and Illinois Jacquette. As a youngster, he was known as Walker since he would walk around everywhere in South Bend. This will also be his stepfather's surname. Walker began playing saxophone in his teenage years due to a local sax player named George Mason. Walker quickly got his own saxophone and taught himself how to play by listening to pieces by Boots Randolph, Stan Getz, Charlie Parker, Lexter Young, and Illinois Jacquette. He learned his distinctive G note by listening to and playing along with these recordings. Walker formed the Jumpin' Jacks after graduating high school. The band progressed to the professional level by performing at local clubs, school proms, and teen dances. Walker played his unique G note on the sax by wowing the audience even in his early years. Walker met trio band fronted by drummer Billy Sticks Nix, organist Fred Patton, and vocalist and guitarist Really Woods after years of paying his dues. Walker joined the band and they would perform in Northern Indiana and Southern Michigan. Billy was eventually drafted into the military during the late 50s, which is how Walker took over. Walker's first act as leader was getting the band to relocate from South Bend to Battle Creek, Michigan. Walker recruited a drummer named Tony Washington to replace Billy by performing at Benton Harbor. Fred Patton eventually left the group and was succeeded by Victor Thomas. Walker's next move was to rename the band to the Rhythm Rockers, which he would later modify again to the All-Stars. The band's first break came in 1961 when they was discovered by Johnny Bristol, who sent them to his friend, Harry Fuqua, who had his own label, Trifile Records. Fuqua was very impressed and signed the band to his company. Here at Tri Fi, the band recorded their first ever recordings with Chris Lackawanna, Cleo's Mood, and Good Rockin'. Duke will change the band's name to Junior Walker's All-Stars after signing them to Tri-5. By 1963, Fuqua sold Tri-5 to his brother-in-law Barry Gordy and when Gordy brought out Tri-5, he would go ahead and change the band name once more to Junior Walker and the All-Stars. About the same time, Tony Washington resigned from the group and was replaced by drummer James Graves and by this time, Gordy had found his soul records his fourth label under the Motown banner. With labels such as Stax, 
and vote dominating jazz, blues, and soul drivers, Gordy sorely needed a skilled group or person to give those companies a run for their money. And Junior Walker and the All-Stars, there was a solution. After joining with Motown, the band had a string of top charting hits with Shotgun, Do the Boomerang, Shake and Finger Pop, and Cleo's Back. The band released their debut album with Shotgun that was released in 1965 and peaked at 108 on the Billboard Top 200 charts and number one on the Billboard Top R&B albums charts. That next year, Grays would crack the group and was replaced by our old friend, Billy Sticks Nicks. That same year, the group they would release many charted singles with I'm a Road Runner. A re-recorded version of Cleo's Mood. How sweet it is to be loved by you. How sweet it is to be loved by you. Boy, yes, yes, baby. And money, that's what I want. The same year, they released two albums with Soul Sections that peaked at 130 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 7 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts, and Road Runner that peaked at number 64 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 6 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. In 1967, the band released three charted singles with Pucker Up Buttercup. Shoot your shot. And come see about me. Throughout the remainder of the 60s, the group released singles like Hip City Part 2. Home Cooking. What does it take? In these eyes. Oh, these eyes. Yeah. Followed by the albums Home Cooking, which peaked at 172 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 26 on the Billboard Top RB album charts, and Got a Hold On to This Feeling that peaked at number 92 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 12 on the Billboard Top RB album charts. By 1969, the band's producing duties was passed to Johnny Bristol, who sought to place Walker in the forefront. Walker began to display his multi-talents by singing or more songs in the late 60s and early 70s. Bristol believed Walker needed a change of pace and pushed him to record an up-tempo ballad called What Does It Takes? Walker initially relented, but the record was completed and was made tremendously successful by radio. Many individuals at Motown, including Barry Gordy, was dissatisfied with the band's new sound, believing it was a departure from the formula that had bought them so much success from the past four years. Gordy finally warmed up to the song when it became a smash hit, and Bristol, he received his approvals. Following this triumph, Bristol worked solely as Walker's producer for the following three years. This would also be the end of the All-Stars as a standalone recording group. Some fans may believe that the recordings made under this new arrangement was inferior to those that was made before 1969. But at the same time, it's difficult to deny the band's chart success between the years of 1969 and 1970. Throughout the early 70s, the band maintained chart success with Gotta Hold On To This Feeling. Do You See My Love?
Ali Hali. And Way Back Home, to name a few. Walker went solo in 1979 and signed with Wickfield Records. His solo career was not as successful as he was when he was with the All-Stars. Walker revived the All-Stars in the early 1980s, and Walker will also appear as a musical guest on Saturday's Night Live season finale on April 11, 1981. Walker had a cameo appearance in the Madonna film Desperately Seeking Susan in 1985. In 1983, Walker resigned with Motown and participated in the Motown 25th television special that same year. Walker co starred in the 1988 film Tape Heads with Sam Moore. Walker was inducted to the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame in 1995, and the All Stars was nominated for an induction into the, into the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame, but they didn't receive enough votes. Walker was sadly passed away from cancer on November 23rd, 1995 at the age of 64. Now, despite being an influence to generations of sax players and having 26 charted R&B singles and 21 charted pop singles, Junior Walker and the All-Stars are not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as of this recording. Now, this video was very, very highly requested and I just wanna let you know Mr. Ritiker, that your comment did not go unnoticed. I seen it and you got it. Guys, if you have any special requests, please drop them below. I do see the comments and I will get to them as soon as I can. So please don't be shy. Let me know who you would like to see next. And I promise, I promise, I promise I will get to them as soon as I can.